not know me, and never shall. But be forewarned, dear reader, I certainly know you. Hey guys, my name is Miata, and if you found this channel, then you are also absolutely obsessed with either the Bridgerton series by Julia Quinn or the series that is being adapted for Netflix by Shondaland that's going to drop on December 25th. So here I am, an out-of-work actress in LA during a pandemic, during a presidential election, <laughs> and I needed something to do. So I thought to myself, why not do a review of the trailer? I am a major lover of romance. I love historical, I love contemporary, I love it all. So I decided to take a look at it and I don't know, I just kind of wanted to talk about it a little bit. I'm super excited and it's exciting to see something that all of us have been excited about, like the Bridgerton series and actually see it adapted and also see it adapted with colorblind casting, which is really interesting. So I thought, yeah, let's just talk about it. I would love to know your kind of history with the Bridgertons in the comment section below. Do you have a history? Are you excited about this coming up? Are you a little like, I don't know about all this? Like, let me know. I want to know everything about you. Okay, before we jump into the trailer itself, I kind of wanted to set the groundwork for this time period. For those of you that are not used to reading maybe historical romances or specifically Regency romances, it's kind of like important to understand just certain things about the time. The TV show may break these things down. Honestly, they probably will, but why not talk about it here? Okay, so brief history lesson. This book takes place, I believe, during the Georgian period of British history. It takes place in 1813. The Georgian period was roughly between 1714 and I think like 1837. And very specifically, it takes place within the Regency period, right? So the Regency period was basically the period of time when King George III, those of us who are American, know him from Hamilton, the King in Hamilton. <laughs> Right, so when he was deemed unfit to rule, his son, Prince Regent, George Augustus, known as Prinny, right? He took over his father's rule, basically. So from 1811 through 1820, we had the Prince Regent's rule. Our Regency period, our Regency romances come from this period, okay? Almost every book during this time period kind of centered the ton. I'm gonna call it the ton because this is the French way of pronouncing it. British people, if there's another way of pronouncing it, I know y'all will let me know in the comment section below, so just go ahead and get on that right now. But don't, again, was the high society. It was the who's of the who's, the what's of the what's. You wanted to be a part of it. If you were outside of it, you wanted to make your way into it. You never wanted to leave it. And the books usually take place within what was called the season. The season was the time period mm, roughly between late January and maybe late July. And it was the time when basically Parliament opened back up. So the men would leave their country homes that they had been at for the other part of the year, come to London with their families, and that would be the start of the season. The men would go to Parliament during the day, the women would have their teas and their lunches, and they would go shopping during the day. And then at night, we had our balls, our dinners, our parties. One of the most important parts of the season, especially in all of the books that take place within the Regency time period, is mating season basically. This was the time for you to find a husband girl. Like, and if you didn't find a husband during this time period, you were a lost cause. And you were looking for a wealthy, hopefully maybe titled, hopefully not older than your father kind of man, who would then, you know, marry you, take care of you, and hopefully you wouldn't die in childbirth after children's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, whatever happens, you know what I mean? But you may die in childbirth. Huh? That's kind of how shit went. Okay, now we have set the scene for this time period, so let's just get into the trailer, okay? The trailer starts out with this young newsboy delivering what is called the Lady Whistledown Society paper, which actually gave me chills to see. I hate being this corny. I am so corny, but it gave me chills. The Lady Whistledown Society's paper is actually a gossip sheet. We've some people calling this like gossip girl for the Regency period, which like honestly, yes, it absolutely is a gossip girl-esque kind of gossip sheet. It is, if you've read the books, then you know that the Whistledown gossip sheet is written by a mysterious woman named Lady Whistledown, who literally appeared out of nowhere like three months ago prior to the start of the book. So Lady Whistledown starts writing this gossip sheet where she's just trashing everybody, right? She'll be like, so-and-so was wearing a very large hat last night and it looked absolutely terrible. Did you see Lady such-and-such such wearing that yellow dress? Oh my god, she's never looked so pale. I mean, she is trashing absolutely everybody in this. And so everybody is acting really upset, which is really funny, but everyone is addicted to reading it because they're also going to trash your enemies, right? So you want to be one of the people to get this gossip sheet. 
we actually don't find out who she is until like book six or seven. It's gonna be really interesting to see if the series like kind of keeps to that. I'm actually really excited to see like, are, is we gonna keep our secret the whole series? Is this really gonna be like a gossip girl situation? Or are you guys gonna reveal who she is and wait for everybody else to find out? And of course, right away, right away, after we see this gossip sheet, what are we seeing? Who is he delivering it to? An Asian woman, which is like, yeah. So one of the biggest things about this series, one of the things you're gonna notice right away from, again, from like second two into the trailer, they went with colorblind casting. Has anyone else read what Lady Whistledown has written of late? But I am very interested to see kind of like how it helps the story or if it is harmful towards the people that they are colorblind casting. Because you have things like um, The Witcher, which is also on Netflix, which I think did an excellent job at colorblind casting. Like it straight up was like, yo, we got black elf, white elf, we got Latina this, we got Asian that, and white this. This is the world we live in. This is just the truth of this world. Versus something like Hamilton, which I love so much, but because it did colorblind casting, we weren't ever able to talk about the racism that people experience as a result of the Founding Fathers, which was a problem. Ever gonna discuss race on this show? Like those are all things that I've been asking myself and I'm very interested to see like how they, uh, how they work through it. The next thing that we're kind of seeing in the trailer is them landing on a shot of who I believe has to be Viscountess Violet Bridgerton, correct? Do not tell me that is yet another scandal sheet. This one is different. This one, this subject's my name. So like I said, we are seeing Viscountess, Violet Bridgerton, and then I think we are seeing um, Phoebe, I don't know how to pronounce her last name, but Phoebe, Phoebe Dynever, who plays Daphne Bridgerton, who is the eldest daughter, the fourth child of Violet, and who is basically the main character in the first books. That's the other thing that I'm very interested in seeing is how they incorporate the entire series in season one, how they decide to incorporate mostly book one. Is it mostly gonna be Daphne's and the Duke's love story? Or is it gonna be kind of adding some of her siblings in there? Like, what are we gonna be seeing? So as we are seeing Daphne and her mother together, what we're also seeing is everyone in town absolutely addicted to this gossip sheet. My name is Lady Whistledown. I'm actually, I kind of love this, this shots where you're seeing people reading this and being like so horrified or being titillated or being, you know, just amused by what they are reading in this gossip sheet. Oh baby, baby, I'm gonna just take a real quick sip of my tea. Hold on. Oh, we just got a shot of a reggae Jean Page um, as Simon Bassett as the Duke of Hastings and girl. <laughs> God, this man is gorgeous. I'm just gonna take another sip of tea and just like look at that. Oh! 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 Yeah, you telling with some wet and gushy. Okay, we can move on, we can move on. Okay, so now we have these gorgeous shot of kind of everyone arriving at this ball and 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 all of their finery, and I just I cannot wait. The social season is upon us. Okay, so now we have this like really great shot of Daphne at the ball. And this is the one thing that kind of like took me out of the trailer. Reggae Jean, which I believe that's his name. It's not Reggae, I think it's Reggae Jean. I believe it's about, um, about 30 years old. And he looks about 30 years old. And the actress who is playing Daphne, Phoebe, is 25. She's only five years younger than him. She, But she looks incredibly young. So we have someone who looks about 30 and someone who looks 12. And maybe she looks different in the series too. I, all I can see is what I can see from the trailer. That was the only thing where I was like, oh, she looks so young compared to him. The ladies might succeed at securing a match. And I, I was actually very surprised. I actually was expecting the actress when I saw her originally in the trailer and looked her up. I actually thought she would be playing maybe Hyacinth because I, she just looks so young to me. So I'm kind of interested in seeing the sexual tension between the two of them. I kind of need it to be there. Uh, the best thing about romance novels is that tension, it's that, it's that push, sorry, and the pull, and the stop, and the go, and I want you, I don't want you, but I want you. I, those are the things I love so much about romance novels. Those what get me time after time. So I, I am excited, but I am also kind of like, is there gonna be sexual tension here? Do I really believe that these two characters wanna bump uglies all night long? I'm gonna be real with you, that's one of the reasons I read romance. I'm not just gonna be very, very honest with you, okay? I'm not reading it just for like the fashion, okay? I can, I can read something else for that. 
So the next shot that we're looking at is kind of, um, it's this like beautiful, entirely not realistic, but gorgeous kind of outdoor dance with fireworks. It's beautiful. Like the scene looks gorgeous. So who cares, Miata? Who cares, Miata? Also, I just thought most people would be dancing in a ballroom, but who cares, Miata? No one cares, Miata. Get back to the point, Miata. Okay. There's someone who faints in one of these shots? I'm gonna have to go back and read the book because I don't remember someone fainting at a party. That could have been like maybe the biggest plot point. <laughs> I'm just forgetting it. I read the book earlier on in, um, reread the book earlier on in quarantine and I literally like, the way my anxiety is set up, I can't remember the last sentence I said. So I'm gonna go back, see who fainted because there's some lady fainting in this uh, trailer and I surely do not remember her. Ooh, we got to my favorite part. We got to the S E X X X X X X sexy pod. Yes, we're like somehow in like a sexy part of the trailer. I feel like everyone's like, ooh, ah, ooh. Again. It's not how it goes, but like truly, there's like a couple different shots where it's like truly being like, there will be sex in this. This is appropriate, obviously. We are, we are, it's an adaption of a romance novel. And obviously this is also a Shonda Lamb production, which means we gonna get some sexy stuff. Like I'm very interested in knowing as a person who absolutely reads romances that are probably more on the explicit side, I am very interested in seeing kind of like how far we go with the sex, how explicit the sex scenes are. Again, romance novels um, written by Julia Quinn or Lisa Kleypas, uh, Mary Below. I mean, these are all Regency romances that are very explicit about the sex in them. You don't be like, and he put his boom boom and the boom boom and it went bam bam, right? They're not gonna like mince words. So like, I'm kind of interested in uh, if the TV show is gonna, uh, you know, if we're gonna fade to black and you're gonna close the door, you're gonna let us peek in. You're gonna be like, flap flap, and I'm gonna be like, hey, hey. I promise I'll never do that again. So anyways, um, so the next thing that we're seeing is it look like Daphne is arriving at Simon's estate. <laughs> Shalom coverage and share every last detail. Okay, lustiness activated! And um, I don't want to spoil anything for you guys right now, so I'm not going to say what happens next kind of in the story because this is kind of like the trailer's ending right around here. You know, the music is building and everybody's looking scandalized and whew, yes! Legitimately, you guys, again, I hate being the corniest of cornballs, but when I watched this for the first time, I actually got chills. I was actually like, I, I was just like very, very, very excited. Um, again, I just think romance novels get such a bad rap, which is ridiculous. I feel like the people who think that about romance novels have not read one in years. If you are interested in romance novel recommendations within this time period, within contemporary time period, let me know. I love recommending romance novels to people. I love opening up that world to people because a lot of the women who read these books are just interested in having amazing happily ever afters for their audiences and having amazing love stories for their audiences. It's not, it's not one size fits all, it's so many different types of stories for so many different types of people. So if you are interested in recommendations, let me know. If you are interested in talking more Bridgertons, let me know. I'm interested in it. I'm probably going to do another one of these if they drop some more stuff going forward until we get to December 25th. Reach the end of our time together. One other thing I'd like to say is hopefully I will have one other host with me when I actually start reviewing the television show. So we'll see. We both love it. So so many thanks to Shonda Land, so many thanks to Julia Quinn, so many thanks to everybody that got this off the ground. And honestly, you guys, let's make more of them and hire me. Thanks. Bye now.